This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update from Monday, March 7. Petroleum prices are in keeping with the increase in retail prices on the international market. From midnight last night, consumers started paying $4.13 per litre for gasoline, an increase of 14 cents. Diesel moved up by 17 cents to cost $3.46 per litre. Kerosene is now $1.80 per litre, an additional 22 cents. For liquefied petroleum gas, the 100-pound cylinder is $159.96. The 25-pound cylinder will now cost $45.09, and the 22-pound cylinder $39.85 and $36.22 for the 20-pound cylinder. The Barbados Union of Teachers says it's been left in the dark about proposed changes to the education system and they're calling on authorities to hold more dialogue with teachers. President of the BUT, Rudy Maloney, issued the challenges to officials after the announcement by the Director of Education Reform, Dr. Ida May Denny, that this will be the last year for the common entrance examination. The Barbados Union of Teachers is at a loss regarding the proposed changes to aspects of the educational system in Barbados by the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training. Limited information was shared in passing by Dr. Idemir Denny during a meeting to discuss the return to -to face-to-face classes between the Ministry of Education and the unions. She informed that 2022 would be the last year for the Barbados secondary schools entrance examination and that further details on its replacement and method used to allocate students to schools would be shared at a later date. The BUT is yet to be consulted or officially informed about any proposed changes to this exam or even the formation of junior academies and academies of excellence as reported in the media. We however note that robust discussion on these changes has taken place in the Parliament of Barbados. The union is therefore encouraging the Ministry of Education to engage the stakeholders in education Over the weekend, officials from the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training announced minor changes to the electronic application for some parents for the Common Entrance Examination schedule for July 5. During an in-person town hall meeting on Saturday at the Lestavon School, Education Officer Sharmin Ali said that that was the only major change for this year. It's going to be really the layout of the form and then the checks and boxes that are done afterwards. So last year's form, um, there wasn't any error checking done at the school itself. The form came directly to the ministry and then the error checking was done there. Um, what that did was it caused a bit of a backlog and, you know, because imagine every child since the exam for that year came into the ministry to one department. Um, so really and truly the form was just changed so that the layout of the form was easier for the parents to understand because we talk about the, the problems we realized persons had with the form in the previous year and then we revamped the form so then adding the like, say the map we realized that a lot of persons that submitted weren't exactly sure what zone they belong to we decided to add the map so it would help them in realizing what zone they were in. Um, persons left off information so we made sure to make sure that the information we required you cannot submit the form before you not It's never the wrong time to do the right thing. That was the rallying call from Prime Minister Mia Motley as she delivered remarks at Ghana's 65th anniversary of independence celebrations at the Cape Coast Stadium on Sunday. Addressing the issue of reparations, she challenged former colonizers to pay up their debts. The heads of government of the Caribbean community have assigned me the responsibility of writing the heads of government of those European states whose governments were responsible for the extraction of wealth from our countries for centuries, and who extracted wealth, I dare say, from your continent and your countries too. There are those who will say and remind us that the specter of war makes it an inconvenient time to have this conversation. But may I say, it is never the wrong time to do the right thing, and I therefore hope that we shall have the support of Africa in these difficult and complex conversations that regrettably have led to the extraction of wealth for centuries from our nations in the Americas. I believe 
We shall be that humanizing force that the world needs now more than ever in these great times of peril in which we live. In other news this Monday, the Caribbean community has been heavily criticized for its condemnation of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Last week, CARICOM issued a statement condemning the actions of the Russian Federation and called for a ceasefire. Speaking at a virtual press conference on Sunday, General Secretary of the Caribbean Movement for Peace and Integration, David Denny, said the regional bloc was badly advised and influenced by incorrect information from Western media. I think that CARICOM made a very big mistake in that CARICOM concentrated on the Western media information and that information influenced CARICOM to act. And I mean all of the governments in the Caribbean region that are part of CARICOM. I think CARICOM should have done a lot more in terms of investigating the matter and CARICOM should have looked at the historical path because this is not an issue that started this year. On Friday, Denny came under fire on social media after voicing his support for Russia, with some people questioning why a peaceful organization would condone war. Denny has since clarified his comments, saying he would prefer if the two sides came together for more dialogue. You see, the Caribbean movement peace and integration is one that support peace. And we believe that our region should it's remain, 11 o'clock we believe that our region should remain a zone of peace i agree um and we support integration between caribbean people and you know but as i mentioned earlier this is a peace intervention by russia one and two by russia going after a position to defend itself against the many threats by the United States of America and NATO nations. Our organization would like to see more discussions between Ukraine and Russia so that both countries can find a solution. But as I mentioned earlier, if you, if you build up a military base against a foreign country, that country will feel threatened and they will do whatever they can to defend themselves. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, a total of 111 new infections, 53 males and 58 females, were recorded by the Beso Santos Public Health Laboratory on Saturday from the 830 tests conducted. The positive cases consist of 25 persons under the age of 18 and 86 who are 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 49, while 1,645 were in home isolation. The number of deaths from the viral illness stands at 319. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and Keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad, Health Minister Terence Dial Singh is warning the population that failure to use the more than 75,000 doses of five vaccines that arrived from the United States on Thursday could jeopardize the country's efforts to receive more. We get the details from TTT News. You may recall we had to, unfortunately, uh, dump roughly 260,000 doses of Pfizer vaccines, which was gifted to us, which were gifted to us. Um, I just want to alert the population 
that the second tranche of 75,000, if we do not use or show an appetite to use a significant or all of the 75,000 doses, um, we would be jeopardizing our ability to receive any more vaccine. Minister Dian Singh thanked U.S. President Joe Biden for making the donation and confirmed the vaccines expire in June of this year. He said the new tranche of Pfizer vaccines will be administered at all mass vaccination sites, adding that a shipment will be sent to Tobago. On the international front, the crisis in Ukraine is now endangering Iran's latest push to revive the 2015 nuclear deal with global powers after Russia demanded written U.S. guarantees that sanction on Moscow will not damage Russian corporations with Tehran. We get the details from Reuters TV. The crisis in Ukraine is now imperiling another fraught international effort, the Iran nuclear deal. Shortly after Tehran said it agreed to a roadmap with the UN nuclear watchdog to resolve outstanding issues which could help revive the 2015 nuclear deal, a new wrinkle from Russia. Russia is demanding written U.S. guarantees that sanctions on Moscow over its invasion into Ukraine would not damage Russian cooperation with Iran. One senior Iranian official told Reuters on Saturday that Russia's move was, quote, not constructive for talks between Tehran and global powers. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said limitations due to new sanctions had become a stumbling block for the Iran nuclear deal, warning the West that Russian national interests would have to be taken into account. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.